Louisiana Congressman Gary Graves of the 6th District is making headway on efforts to reform Social Security and eliminate penalties for millions of people working in public service. In a rare move, Congressman Graves is forcing a vote in the U.S. House of Representatives on legislation to eliminate both the windfall elimination provision and the government pension offset. I talked with Graves about the prospect of reforming Social Security before he leaves office and what's next in his political and professional life. Congressman Garrett Graves is here at LPB to give us an update about what's going on in the 6th District. And I know there is a lot of attention focused on Social Security reforms, and you've taken the lead on this. So let's back up and let's break down what we're trying to do to reform Social Security. Sure, sure. So um, there is this really antiquated policy that dates back over 40 years ago. And it actually discriminates against or disincentivizes people to choose public service. Things like being a police officer, being a firefighter, being a teacher. Mm -hmm. I would argue those are really important professions, especially now. Um, and, and, and just to give you an example, let's say that you and I both worked as teachers, but we worked at a private school. Mm -hmm. And we got paid the exact same amount. We worked the same dates. Mm -hmm. And after 20 years, I quit and I said, All right, I'm going to stop teaching. And you said, you know what, I'm going to go work for a public school now. And you went on to teach for the public school for 10 more years. Whenever you and I go to retire, even though we paid the exact same amount into the Social Security system, I may get a check for $1,800 a month in my Social Security benefits. Yours may only be 600 mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, people are like, wait a minute, you, you paid the same amount, you worked the same dates and paid into it. Why are you being discriminated against, especially in a career where folks aren't really overpaid and, and, and a critical uh, service to our community? And so what our bill does is it, it eliminates that discrimination. It eliminates that penalty. There's another one that affects widows or spouses of a public servant, a public employee, like, again, a police officer, teacher, firefighter, and others. And so our bill just eliminates it. It just says that you're treated the same as anyone else who paid into Social Security. We call this the Social Security Fairness Act. And the two provisions we're talking about, just to get a little technical, is Weapon GPO. Yes, yeah. Yeah. windfall elimination provision and government pension offset. Yeah. So in, in your efforts to propel the Social Security Fairness Act, you, you recently had what we call a discharge petition for this legislation, um, I think more than 200 signatures. Tell me about that event, yeah. because as I understand it, it's kind of rare. It, it is rare, it's very rare. In fact, we think this is about the fourth time in the last 30 years that this has happened. And look, we, we had been negotiating and trying to come to consensus, working very cooperatively with Republicans, Democrats, the leadership committee and others, and we just couldn't get there. Mm -hmm. And so since we couldn't get there, what we did is we, we set a de deadline and we said, look, by this date, if we don't have an agreement, a compromise, then we're going to have to go this route that forces it. Or you have to get a majority of House members, which is 218. We could have gotten many more, mm -hmm. but we got 218 signatures, uh, mostly of our 330 co-sponsors on the bill. And, um, and so it does force this for a vote. We expect it to happen in the second week in November. How realistic is it that we could actually see some action with the Social Security Fairness Act before you leave office? Sure. I think that uh, they have the votes in the Senate. I know we have the votes in the House. And so as long as we're given a fair shot, as long as this actually gets scheduled in the United States Senate, um, I think this could go to the president's desk this year. We believe that over the last 40 years, somewhere between six and seven hundred billion dollars have been taken from these public servant retirees and put toward other other uses. Six to seven hundred billion. And we're not trying to get all that money back. All we're trying to do is fix things prospectively. The Congressional Budget Office released a report uh, basically, in summary, saying, yes, we do have ROI on right. coastal restoration efforts. Uh, you've been at the forefront of this. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Um, the Congressional Budget Office released a report that, that says that, uh, in effect, that, that you get about $3 in return for every $1 you invest in projects like coastal restoration, hurricane protection, or flood control. Um, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they recognized the value, but I'll also tell you, 
if you put the right criteria in place, I think you can take that three dollars and make it ten, mm -hmm. and or maybe even higher. And I think in Louisiana, our state really has been a national and international leader in developing the right criteria to make sure that we're making strategic investments, not pet political project investments, but strategic investments. I think that that's great, great ammunition for us, that report uh, for us to continue making the right investments. Uh, it shows that what we're doing in Louisiana doesn't just protect our communities, it provides a national return on investment by decreasing mm -hmm. uh, disaster recovery dollars like we saw with Hurricane Francine. 11 feet of storm surge stopped in its tracks as a result of the investments that we made in Southern Terrible and Parish, uh, saving taxpayers probably over a billion dollars. Well, Congressman Graves, what's next for you in your career? Do you plan to stay in politics? And if so, in what way? Yeah, uh, you know, candidly, I, I'm not certain what's, what's next yet. Um, uh, both my wife and the bank have made clear that the mortgage is due in January, so I, I do have to figure it out. But uh, I don't know. You know, it, it, being in a job like this and just some of the previous jobs I had, there are things that you just you kind of can't separate yourself from. I love the the coastal issues and really enjoy working on coastal restoration and and, and just community protection in in South Louisiana. Uh, love working on energy issues and infrastructure. So I suspect that I will be involved in some of those things in some cases. I'd, I'd love to see a new bridge get built here in Baton Rouge. Um, but, but I'm not certain on, on what's next yet. What I'm hearing is that your heart remains in public service. I, um, I love, you know, look, anybody can go out there, find problems and complain about them. Being in a position like this and actually being able to fix them, it, it's, it, it really is, like, I, I love doing that. Well, but I think I, it's safe it. to say that you intend to finish what you started no on doubt. all levels. No doubt. Congressman Graves, thank you so much for all that you do for us. And uh, we will continue to watch and wish you well and with great anticipation, look for your next move. Hey, thank you very much.